Okay. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, sir. All right. So let's give them two more minutes once we have 20 people in the meeting, we will start. All right. So today we are going to cover transformers equivalent cycle. Then after that, we will look at how you can determine values of uh, the equivalent cycle components. And uh, we will do a simple simulation in Python about transformer and the properties. All right, so starting with the first part. Uh, last time, or last lecture yesterday, we were able to look into the real transformer. And the lecture before that, we looked into an ideal transformer. We've seen how a real transformer also differs from an ideal transformer. Now we've looked at some of the properties of a real transformer. So today we are going to look at an equivalent circuit for a real transformer, taking into consideration the material, okay, the core material uh, that is used to build the transformer and its properties. Uh, if you want to model a real transformer accurately, you need to take into account four different types of losses. You will have the copper loss, eddy current loss, hysteresis loss, and then the leakage flux. The copper losses, these are ba these are due to the these are due to the resistive uh, heating in the windings. Uh, you have your winding, so you know a cable has some resistance, right? It has some resistance. So because of that resistance, you're going to have some amount of loss in that regard okay uh, for any current losses we have discussed them yesterday so i'm sure you are fully aware of this these are losses that uh, are based on the resistive heating in the core okay um they, we have seen yesterday that they are proportional to the square of voltage that is applied to the transformer Hysteresis losses also, we discussed this yesterday. This happens due to the fluctuation nature of the AC current uh, going up and down. So we magnetize and demagnetize, and this also leads to some amount of losses. Uh, lastly, you have the leakage flux, as we have discussed yesterday, that we have some flux that is going throughout the core. This is the magnetizing flux that the real flux we want that flux that the one that is of usage to us however still due to the imperfect nature of the core you will have some flux that will leak out under the leakage flux 
So whenever you are trying to model a real transformer, these four key losses have to be taken into consideration. All right, so now let's see how can we take these four losses and model them uh, ele electrically, okay, using our electronic components. So how do we represent a copper loss? How do we represent a current loss in the case of the transformer? That's what we're going to look at. Copper losses are modeled uh, by the resistors RP and RS. Okay. Mm. This and this, these are the copper losses. So this is how we model them mathematically in our uh, equivalent circuit of the transformer. So whenever you see the RP and the RS, these are the resistance due to the windings. Okay. For the case of leakage flux in the primary winding, because here when you apply voltage, of course you are going to have a flux. So how do we model that mathematically? Remember, yesterday we were able to obtain that DMF, okay, based on the leakage in the primary is given by NP, the flux, right, in the primary, the rate of change of the flux in the primary. So when you do this multiplication, we have been able to evaluate this yesterday. So since much of the flux is going to pass through air, and air has a constant reluctance, we also discuss what reluctance is. We say it is the counterpart of resistance, however, in the case of magnetism. So it's like uh, causing opposition to the flux flow. So air, air as you know, it has some form of properties, and uh, one of the key properties is that it has some constant uh, reluctance. And uh, now, if the leakage flux is going to go through the air, it is going to get uh, resisted by this constant reluctance in the air. Okay, so the, to 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 model this, we can also put our primary coils leakage flux as follows, where uh, rho is nothing but the permeance of the flux path. Uh, NP is the number of tons in the primary, IP is the current that is in the primary winding. So if you substitute this into this equation here, okay, so you have ELP equals to D of rho NP IP DT. So you can take some of them out. This is constant, so you can take it out. Okay, rho is also constant. You can bring it out. That means NP, NP, NP squared, rho is outside. We are left with di, dt. So what we are saying is that the EMF due to the uh, flux, okay, get flux is given as n squared rho di dt, okay, the IP in the primary. So if you have this, and uh, there is also an equation for what we call self-inductance in the primary coil. And this self-inductance in the primary coil is also given by LP n squared P. So if you take this and put it back in that previous equation, we end up with ELP equals to Okay. Sorry about that technical issue. Okay. So now we know that the induced voltages in the primary coil can be given as ELP, LP, which equals to LP di dt. Same thing, you can apply the same logic in the secondary coil. Okay. So now we know two things out of the four. We know the copper losses, 
we know the liquid flux, right? So the liquid flux can be modeled by primary and secondary inductors. If you look at this, this is an induction, right? So that means if you have your cycle, these two, okay, are copper losses. Okay, then these two, these inductors, these are your liquid flux. All right. Then we have what we call the magnetization current. Uh, of course, as you know, yesterday we discussed about the magnetization flux, which is as a result of the magnetization current, the one that we actually want. Okay, so this magnetization current uh, that leads to the magnetization okay uh, reactants we can model this here inside okay this will give you xm being the magnetization current so that means the core loss current can be modeled by rc okay and then the magnetization reactants can be modeled by xm so when you have this XM and XC, RC, which are just approximations, you are able to know uh, your other losses, okay? Um, we also have, so, so now we know this, we know this, what they stand for, and we also know that this are uh, as a result of the other two losses, the AD and the hysteresis loss. All right, so, if we have some cycle that is like this, this is what is called the transformers equivalent cycle. So anywhere you are asked to draw a transformers equivalent cycle, a real transformer, okay? This is the exact equivalent cycle of a real transformer, taking into consideration all those imperfections that we have in reality. However, we can actually even go one more, one step further. We can do some referring, yeah? For example, we know this part, just like we discussed yesterday. We can assume this is transformer and we refer this two to the primary side. These two are in the secondary, let's refer them to the primary, okay? And when you do referring, transformation of impedance is what happens. So from uh, from secondary to primary, you square the turn ratio and you multiply it by the RS. Same thing for the other one, A squared XS, right? But this one is J. Okay. However, the current you divide it by A. So by doing this, you are also getting yet another equivalent cycle of the transformer. However, with the impedance in the secondary side refer to the primary side. At the same time, we can also take a look at this two and also refer them, okay? Refer them to the secondary side so that we will be left with our RS, XS, but all of this one and two will be referred to the secondary side. So what do we do? We can just say, this RP, we divide it by the turns ratio. And this is what we already did yesterday. Same thing with the inductance. We also divide it by A squared. This one also by A squared. And lastly, this one also by A squared. The current here is multiplied by A because the turns ratio is inversely proportional to the ratio of the primary current to the secondary current. So this two, one, two, three. All of them are also the same thing as the exact equivalent cycle of a real transformer. So you can use either of these three to do your analysis when you are given a question. Is that clear?
Okay. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. Is this turn to join? Okay. So if this is the exact, we can also get the what we call the approximate, okay? That is, you want to simplify further, you want to get some approximate uh, circuit. So, and this is mostly what we use in the practical uh, case. We normally use the approximation, okay? So, when you have your, if you look at this, any of this, either this or this, and you use your principles of electrical uh, technology, PEE, which you were taught, you have resistance in parallel and resistance in series, right? You can actually do some manipulation and you come across having this equivalent resistance, all right? So if you are having circuits like this, for example, you can take out this, for example, of course, these two, you can call them Z, let's say ZP, and then this one is the ZS, but the referred one, okay? Uh, this one also is the, the ZP referred one, and then this one is the ZS, okay? Uh, you have something in between. We can do something, we can say, okay, let's shift this part also to the secondary side so that here we'll be left with only the core losses in the center here so when we do that migration then we get the equivalent impedance which we can call r eq uh, r equivalent in the primary then the uh, x equivalent in the primary similarly you can do from the secondary side so you just maintain okay this part However, the resistance and the inductance that were here before, you should migrate them to the other part and you take their equivalent. So this is the approximate circuit and it's also used in the analysis and it's even the most uh, widely used because sometimes the real one is uh, complicated when you are trying to do the analysis, but this one is a lot better. Uh, not only that, when you come in practical sense of matters, you are going to be using your meters, okay? Your ammeter, your voltmeter, you will be using them to be able to measure the current, measure the voltage, and also measure the power. And when that happens to be the case, you need to make some approximations because you cannot easily be able to measure the distances as, uh, as they appear in the equivalent cycle. So if you consider that this exactation branch is not there, if you kill this part, you end up with a simple circuit that is just like this. Okay, a series, a single impedance. Okay, so this sometimes you do it and uh, we're going to see why and how we're going to be able to determine the values of this RC. XM, okay, the RP that you saw here, the XP, you want to know these components. What are the values of these components? And that's what we are going to do next. Now that we know how we can be able to model a real transformer to get its equivalent circuit, then how do we know the value of the components within that our equivalent circuit of the transformer? Okay. That will be the next thing we are going to look at. <laughs> so if you have questions, you can ask. Otherwise, we can look at how you can be able to obtain those values. Yes, sir. OK, no question. I have a question, sir. OK, what's your question? Uh, the first part we looked at where you talked yeah. about the the that is the equivalent circuit for a real transformer okay so since you said we we may not come across it in most of practical experiences so mm -hmm. i don't know 
which of them are we going to focus on to understand the the the, the component contained in them? Okay, let me make sure I understand the question. Uh, yes, sir. like. I like what I'm saying is that since you said for most of our practical works, we are yeah. only going to be focusing on the approximate uh, equivalent circuit of the transformer. Yeah. So is it yeah. to focus more on that, and then maybe we can just study for understanding the the real for the real tri transformer. Okay. So um, to answer your question. When you are trying to learn about a transformer or not just transformer, anything they teach you in school, yeah, they want you to learn about everything that you can uh, about it. But when it comes to the industry or the practical case uh, sense of things, there are some key elements that you can discard or uh, you know you can relax. You can relax some of the assumptions. You can even come up with some practical assumptions so that you can be able to get things done. Uh, in theoretical sense of matters, most of the time, if you want to follow things in real life, the way they appear in theory, then you will not get anything done in the real, uh, in the real practical uh, case. So what we normally do in engineering is we need to understand the theory first, because that tells us about the principles of uh, the system, you know, we know the behavior of the system in theory and how it's supposed to behave. This is just to give us a guide to guide us in our quest for truly understanding something that is in existence in real life. So if you do not understand the theoretical background, for example, like, OK, by default, a real transformer uh, has so many components which are losses. And uh, these losses were because maybe of the winding of the nature of the uh, of the wire. The wire on it in itself is not an ideal wire. It has so many imperfections, and those imperfections are going to cause a form of resistance to your flow of current. You know, and the fact that it is uh, wound. Okay, and the fact that it is wounded in a coil form is going to also induce in some inductance into the system. Understanding this is important. OK, then of course, when you go to the practical uh, case or the practical scenario, you know that OK, all those are assumptions that were made assuming that you are working in theory. But some of these assumptions can be relaxed. OK, for example, yesterday we were looking at uh, some voltages, right? And we consider the voltage in the secondary side to be very low compared to the primary. So we try to neglect that one. Uh, so in practice, you can do something like that. So there is no point here uh, that is not important, whether the exact or the approximate. If you are trying to really understand the working principles of a transformer, you should have a full understanding of the exact, then also understand how the exact is now, you know, uh, simplified to give us the approximate and why that is the case. Why do we do the simplification? Because that's very important. OK, so I right. go and be drawing something like this alone. When you are given, try to do the exact, then you can make your case that, but in reality, I cannot find this value, so we can go with the approximate or something like that. Uh, okay? Yes, sir. All right. So now we want to find this component values, the values of the components, okay? Uh, we're talking about, okay, we want to find these values. RC, JXM, and what have you. So if you want to evaluate this, you can find these values using what we call either open cycle test or short cycle test. We're going to see short cycle test also. So for the case of open cycle test, uh, let's assume you are in your internship, okay? And you come... Uh, <laughs> Okay, 
uh, you are maybe working with the power holding company or what have you, and they want you to be able to uh, model the transformers to do some calculation to know whether the design or whether the transformer is well designed. Because if you don't do these calculations, you will not be able to understand how good the design of the transformer mm. is. So you want to figure this out. Mm. So the first thing you can say, OK, why don't I start with doing what we call the open cycle test? Uh, in the case of the open cycle test, you are going to put in full voltage, OK, in the input here. So it's like you connect it to power. Okay, with the full line voltage in our case, if you are in a distribution transformer is 220 volts, right? We talked about this. If you are uh, in the substation, you are talking about uh, many kilovolts and so on. So assuming you put in the full line, you can put your voltmeter to be able to understand and uh, determine this voltage. If you know this voltage too, you can put your ammeter to find the current that is flowing from the source on this A or the I. Okay. So assuming this could give you the IP. Okay. Here, but look at here, there is no load connected. Okay. But we put full voltage. That's why we call it often circuit. We do not connect any load to the secondary side. OK, then we put in the full line voltage and we use our voltmeter, ammeter and wattmeter to find the voltage, the current and the power. All right, so if you get these values, you can easily do some uh, quick calculation uh, where you can see a conductance is equals to one over RC. Because with these values, I, A, I, V and P, you can be able to obtain the power factor. Uh, P equals to what? IV cos theta, right? So you know P, you know I, you know V. Can't you find theta, right? So if you know this, and then also you can now use conductance to say, okay, GC equals to 1 over RC, then the susceptance of the inductor given by BM is also 1 over XM. Remember, RC and XM, these are the components that we are trying to find their values. And they are inverse, they are conductance and susceptance. These are values that you shouldn't be aware of. However, RC, if you remember our cycle to right for the transformer, we have R here, and then we have XM here, right? So these guys are in parallel. Okay, so what the equivalent resistance here? Uh, it's like saying you add this to right one over RC, one over this, and that's what one over uh, look here. So here, Ye is, is called the admittance, right? It's given by JC minus JBM, uh, but we know what JC is, it's one over RC. We know BM is one over XM. So the admittance in this case is this, is given by this. It's also in the case of our open cycle test, admittance, the magnitude of the admittance is given by the I that is running in the open circuit divided by the voltage we applied in this open circuit. Okay. If we know that value, we know why. So if we you know this, you are getting closer to finding these two other values. All right. You can also determine the power factor, as I showed you earlier, that P equals to what? IV cos theta, right? So you can find the theta here by saying cos theta equals to P over IV. And when you know that also, you can also find the same admittance in this regard that is also equals to what? IC over VIC angle minus the power factor which you find. So you have two equations and you can solve them simultaneously. This is equation one, this is equation two, okay? And the Y E is what? In this case is what? J minus BM 
okay you can acquire this value if you know this and then you using this you can be able to know the values of rc and xm we are going to look at an example for these two equations uh, you will know how to do simultaneous equation you can take advantage of these two then you find our values of the two unknowns rc and xm so this is the idea about having an open circuit. So we do not connect any load to the output of the trans, uh, yeah, to the secondary side of the transformer. And we put a huge voltage, the full line. Then we use our ammeter, yes, voltmeter, and wattmeter. Okay. Question? Somebody is asking a question or what? So now let's look at the second type of test, which can also help us to get the second equation. Abdul Sabur, you are making noise. Okay. So the next test is called the short circuit test. Here, look at the secondary side. Okay. We short circuit it. Unlike the case of open circuit where there is no load, here there is also no load, but we connected. So this is like a short. Ideally, you normally have what a load in between them, right? There used to be Z load. But now we are saying we did it first of all without any connection. And then now we put everything and we want to also do the same. It's making noise. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, we can. Yeah. All right. So let's let, let, let's go in and also do this. So here, what do we do? Uh, we're not going to put in full line voltage. We're just going to put in a very low input voltage, OK? Because it's shorted, if we put in full line, we might destroy our transformer. So we will put a small amount of voltage, okay, to the primary side. And then we will also go ahead and measure the voltage, the amp, uh, the current, and the, the power, okay. So since the current is, uh, the voltage is low, and the current that is flowing through the excitation branch is negligible here because the voltage is very small, so the current is not that much. Therefore, almost all the voltage drop in the transformer is due to the series elements in the circuit. So, if you remember, you have the input, right? We have the series elements, not the parallel ones now. Okay, this was the initial what we have, right? The transformer was like this. Our resistance in the coil. Then we have that resistance, okay? We have the inductors. Okay, so this is our transformer before. With the open circuit, we were able to find these values. Now with the short circuit, we want to find the series, the other ones, okay? That clear. That's what we are trying to do. So we assume since the voltage here is very small. So even the part that is in the the branch here, the ones that are in parallel, they are not going to see much current. So we can neglect those ones. Okay. We can just assume that part doesn't exist because most of the voltage drop is going to happen because of the first element. Because you remember KCL, when current comes, it's going to get divided. So if the current is very small, if it gets divided, only a small amount of current is going down. All right? So that's the point we are trying to make here. So for that case, we can just uh, assume that the magnitude of the series impedance, the RP and the this, the magnitude is also given by what? V over ISC. 
which is of course following uh, your arms law right v equals to ir but in this case is iz right so z is nothing but what v over i same thing with the uh, power factor okay where p equals to what iv equals psi right where psi is the power factor so here we know the power factor we also know the impedance and uh, another equation here is that the impedance can be calculated as the v short circuit divided by the i short circuit angle of the power factor so remember our approximation here this one so so the short circuit test we are doing we are just making assumption if you look at this one for example initially we found these two guys or oh, you can say we found these two guys now we are trying to find these two guys okay if you look at this okay if you look at it that way so that's what we are trying to do and uh, that's why you have something like this okay but the problem now is we know the r equivalent we know the x equivalent how do we get the rp okay and the xp the rs and the xs how do we get this two now this is very challenging uh, the only way is to do the same test now apply small voltage okay sh short the primary side so here you put the shot here and take the voltage to this end okay you put your voltmeter and also do to get a second equation of the z so with these two equations uh, you are getting closer to finding the the two so that's one way to go about doing it okay uh, so to recap what have we done so far we said we have a transformer a real transformer and a real transformer has some imperfections these imperfections can be modeled uh, mathematically and electrically in the forms of resistances and inductances so when you have your your wire it has an inherent resistance because it is not ideal and when it is wound up to become a coil it also introduces into effect the inductance and for that reason in the primary and in the secondary we are able to have both the resistance and inductance apart from that we have the core loss in the center which is due to the loss uh, that is inherent in the core material not now the wire the core material okay and that can be represented as also a parallel combination of a resistor and an imp uh, and a reactance okay that's due to the core the material which the transformer core is uh, is designed so we want to know these values so that we can be able to first of all understand how well our transformer is designed is it in good design or not and in order to do that we can do two types of tests we can do the open circuit test or the short circuit test the open circuit test will allow us to know the values of the components which are based on the core the rc and the xm due to the core losses and how do we do the open circuit test we put in our full line voltage and we make sure our secondary side is not connected to any load and is open and is not shorted then we use our voltmeters ammeters and wattmeter to calculate the open circuit current open circuit voltage and open circuit power based on that we can find a simple equation uh, accordingly to give us the power factor and then we know the admittance with, with this we can now be able to have two equations with two unknowns we solve them simultaneously and we find the rc and the xm in order to find now the series components that are based on the uh, winding okay the loss is based on the winding 
we can use the short circuit test. And the short circuit test, we shot the secondary side, for example, and then we apply a small voltage in the in the input. Then we use our ammeter, our voltmeter to be able to measure the voltage, the current, and we also use the uh, meter to also the watt meter to measure the power. With this, we can also find the corresponding power factor as well as get the magnitude of the series impedance referred to the primary side of the transformer. So with that, we are able to complete this. It's like we have this circuit and we know these components. We know this, we know this, we know this, and we know this. The problem though is this Z is giving us the equivalent. So in order for us to know the corresponding primary and secondary resistances and uh, reactances, we have to also do something similar in the secondary side, then we will be able to find uh, REQ secondary and XEQ secondary. So now we know we will have these four equations, four unknowns, and we will have four equations. Then you have four equations, four unknowns, you can solve them simultaneously. And at the end of the day, you will be able to have the values for all the components, okay? Starting with RS, XS, RP, XP, RC, and XM. So these are the six parameters we are trying to obtain. Uh, is that clear? Yeah. Question. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. So let's now look at this example. We want to determine the equivalent circuit impedances of a 20 kV. Okay, 20 kV A, 8,000 by 2,400 volts. 600 has transformer. So what type of transformer is this? Is it a step up or step down? Step down. Okay, step why is down. it a step down? Why is it a step it's down? Step down. Yeah, because it's it, thousand foot to, to two forty, right? Yes. So it's a step down. It takes in eight thousand, and on the secondary side we get two forty volts. So we are stepping it down. Okay, good. So we have some readings. Okay, maybe you the by working with Kedco, they sent you to do these readings. Uh, then you come up with this values. You use your ammeter, voltmeter, and wattmeter. You got the V open circuit, I open circuit, and the P open circuit. Then you shot it also. We get the V short circuit that is running within the circuit. We get the I short circuit, and also you get the power, the short circuit power. Okay. Very good. So now remember, we can start finding RC and XM, right? We know our power factor is given by what? P open circuit divided by V open circuit. I open cycle, right? So if you have the P open cycle based on our readings when we went to the field it was 400. V open cycle is 8000. I open cycle is 0 0.214. When you do the multiplication, you get 0 0.234. However, in the case of open cycle, always is a lagging power factor. Okay? The current is always lagging the voltage. All right, so now we know this. Then we can also find the second part, which is the admittance, right? The excitation admittance. And that's the I open circuit divided by V open circuit, angle minus cos inverse, right? Of this, which we just did. Uh, okay, so when you do this, this is I open circuit, V open circuit, 
angle of that, you end up with an admittance, which is like this. So what is your admittance? Remember, what's your admittance? Admittance y e, the excitation is one over R c, right? Plus j one over x m. That means R c is the real part of the admittance, which is zero point zero 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 six three, and uh, you take its reciprocal, and you will get your R c. Okay. Similarly, with x m is the reciprocal of the imaginary component of the admittance. So y over one over what? 0 0.00000261, that will give you the XM. All right, so this now tells us that our RC is 159 kilo ohms and our XM is 38.3 kilo ohms. All right, so now we know these guys. Okay, we are happy. Now moving on, we want to find the R equivalent, right? Uh, and then the x equivalent. So let's do it from the short circuit. The power factor here still lagging. Okay, no problem. And then we know the series impedance, which are these three, these two. So what do we have here? VSC divided by ISC, which is what angle uh, of the power factor, which we have something here. So you can do the mass with your calculator. At the end of the day, you find the real part R equivalent to be 38.3. You find the what X equivalent to be 192. Okay, so we know we know this. So who can tell me what the equation of R equivalent in terms of the resistance in the secondary and primary windings? What's that? RP, right? Over S squared plus RS. Is that correct? So what's A squared? What's A? What's A in our in this our transformer? What's A? Thirty eight point four. Thirty eight point four. That's A. Right. Eight thousand. Right. Divide by two forty. Right. What does that give you? Is that thirty eight point four? I do not have my calculator. Can somebody else confirm that 38 point? Because I'm getting 33.33. 33. Yes, 33.33. 33. It's 33.3. Aha, uh -huh. uh -huh. so this is A. Okay. Aha, uh -huh. so now we know what A is. That means we have one equation for our equivalent, right? So we can see uh, RP divided by A squared, which is 33.33 .33 squared plus RS is equals to a 38.3, okay? That's equation one. We can do the opposite using the opposite uh, circuit, which is this one, okay? You can do the same thing with this one. Uh, you find your R equivalent for the secondary side and R, uh, XA equivalent for the secondary side using the same approach. Then you can now go ahead and say, okay, what is the R equivalent? <clears throat> in the secondary, once you find it, you have to do, of course, the short circuit test, guys. Make sure now the voltage you are applying is in the secondary side, and then you do the measurement of the power, you do the measurement of the current, right? And then when you come here, what do you have? For this part, you will have what? RP, right? A squared plus I'm sorry, we are doing the uh, the opposite, right? I hope. Okay. 
yeah a square something like that we are solving them now okay i think the previous one rp is there it is the r s that is being referred to the primary side so at that point it is going to be a squared r s okay and for this one is going to be rp that is being referred there rp over a squared then plus r s okay this is the r equivalent p and this is the r equivalent s so you you have these two equations this is the one we obtained earlier as 38.3 and this is r plus a squared which we found to be 33.33 squared rs equation one then when you do the same short circuit test, but now from the secondary side, you will find this. We were not given this in the question. So if I want you to find the corresponding REP and RS in the exam, I will tell you, okay, we did another short circuit test from the secondary side, and these are the I, the V, and the P, okay? Open side, uh, short circuit. So with that, I'm expecting you to find the R equivalent in the secondary, then based on that, go ahead and find the same equation and solve these two equations simultaneously to find the exact RP and the exact RS. You have to apply the same, the same, the same logic to finding the XP and the XS. Okay, the same logic. So with that, you are able to know the value of all the components in your transformer. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. So if there are no questions, we can move to the second, uh, the third part of the class, which is to do some simulation. Okay, in Python. And this will form your second assignment. Hey. Yeah, this will form your second assignment. So you need to make sure you understood the previous ones because I'm going to give you a transformer to find its own corresponding equivalent circuit. You do it by hand, and I want you to do also do it using the computer. Design your own program and do it. Are we clear on this? Yes, sir. Okay, so if there are no questions, we will start. Um, our objective for this is we want to simulate the behavior of uh, a real single phase transformer under different conditions of a circuit condition, such circuit condition. Uh, we would like to visualize some aspects such as the voltage ratio, the current ratio, the magnetization current, and the power losses. And by the end of the lab, what I'm expecting you to be able to understand is the relationship between primary and secondary voltages as well as the currents based on the tons ratio you will see the impact of the core losses remember the core losses are hysteresis and the ad losses right in our equivalent circuit they are the ones representing the rc and the what xm right in our equivalent circuit these are the ad okay we call them core losses hysteresis and the AD current losses, okay? We will perform short circuit and open circuit test and we will use Python for that. So this is our simulation setup and the components we're going to use. We are going to set primary tones uh, and then the secondary winding tones. You will see what happens if you increase the winding in the primary, okay? maintaining maybe a constant value of the tones in the secondary, what's going to happen? The impact of this on your transformer. Uh, assuming that your primary voltage is 230 volts. Okay, so most likely what type of transformer are we trying to design here? Step down. Step down. So primary Step voltage down. is 230. That's the primary. Step up. Step up, yeah. Most likely, we want to boost it because 230 is normally the load voltage, right? In Nigeria, we are operating at 220, 240 volts, right? So that means 230 is an average voltage that you normally utilize at home. 
which means that most likely you are trying to step up. However, that doesn't mean that you can not have a small device. Let's say your TV, it could have its power device that is having a transformer inside it that will convert the 230 to a lower voltage. It's all possible, okay? We want to know, for example, the resistances, RP and RS. We also want to know the core losses, RC and XM. Okay, so this is very important. We will give, for example, these two values and we will see the impact of RC. What happens if the RC is very high? What happens if the XM is very high? You can all try this to see how your transformer design is going to be affected. And we, of course, the tests we're going to do include the open circuit and the short circuit test. And the losses we're going to see are the what copper losses as well as the core losses. The core losses, remember RC and XM. Okay. Those are the core losses. The copper losses, RP, okay, RS. These are copper losses, right? Okay. And what we intend to see is that we will see some voltage ratio, you see magnetization current, power losses, your circuit and open circuit test results. So if this is clear, what we want to do, we can now move to the code in the environment, the IDE. Is it clear? Are we together? Yes, we are. That's how we are. Okay. So I'm going to share my screen. Okay, can you see my screen? No, sir. No, sir. I can't. Can you say it now? No, sir. No, sir. Okay. So, <clears throat> initially, Sorry. I'm, you know this. this yeah. yeah is, this part is should be clear to you. Here we are importing two libraries, okay? NumPy and Matplotlib. NumPy to allow us to do what? What you cannot see? Yes. Yeah. You cannot see. You say. You cannot see. Okay. Let me switch to light. Like this, maybe. Can you see it now? 
if yes sir. yes yes we can okay so i'm sure you know numpy and matplot library what do we use them for numpy so calculation okay a matplot for plotting graph okay so we import them because we are going to use them okay um Next, we define the transformer parameters. Here, we said the number of primary is 100 tons, and number of secondary is what, 50 tons, okay? So this is a step down, right? And we also decide, decide the voltage, okay? Now we know our VP is 230 from what you've seen in the definition. We can set our frequency to 50 hertz. Let's define the RP to be 0 0.5. Just assuming you have done the often uh, the short circuit test and you know these two values, and also you did the open circuit test and you know these two values. All right. Okay. So let's assume. Now, since we know our frequency, okay, we can generate a sinusoidal wave, right? That has this, which is 50 has is say like 50 cycles in one second. All right, we can use the length space from the NP library to be able to generate these numbers for us. Okay. All right. Now we have a simple function here. You know how to define a function in Python? A function, you use the def keyword, you write the name of the function, and you pass the arguments. Okay? And then it can either return nothing or it can return a value. Here it can return a value for us. So whenever I call the primary voltage, I want to know what is the primary voltage. Okay, I can run this. Uh, I can see VP equals to MP sign. 2 times mp pi f. So what is this? What is What am I trying to do here? Hmm? What am I trying to do here? Omega this highlighted two part. Omega, omega t, two. right? Yes, yes, omega equals to 2 pi f. 2 pi f, right? Omega equals to 2 pi f. So what I'm trying to say is, I get my voltage, which is what, which is 230, and I'm trying to convert it into what AC. Here it is what DC. Here I'm trying to convert it to AC. Okay. So I will multiply the 50 by this T that is changing from up and down, and you can plot the voltage, and you will see it is now becoming sinusoidal. Okay. Now to obtain the secondary voltage. This is simple. If we know the tons ratio, we can be able to know the secondary voltage, right? Uh -huh. Remember, NS over NP is equal to what? VP, uh, VS over VP, right? The opposite here. So you can do something similar and you will be able to know if you know the VP, okay? Which is what you will get from here, the sinusoidal form of the VP. And then you multiply it by the tons ratio, we'll be able to get the secondary voltage. Is this function clear? Yes, sir. All right. Then the next step is we want to find the magnetization current and we want to also obtain the core losses. Okay. Uh, magnetization current lacks second, sorry. Yeah, lacks uh, our voltage by 90 degrees. So just assume that's your power factor. We already defined XM here. We said assuming the magnetization reactance is 2000 ohms, okay? 
So we do it this way. Since we have this, using our equation of VP by this, we should be able now to obtain the magnetization current. Uh, if you remember when I was drawing, I think it was yesterday, when we were drawing the magnetization curve. I don't know if you remember. So if you look at the magnetization curve, it's like the voltage and the current are perpendicular, right? To one another. So here you will see the current is going to be more like uh, lagging this one by 90 degrees. All right. Same thing now we can find the core loss. The core loss is the voltage in the primary. Then you look at, divide it by what? By the RC, right? Ohm's law. So VP over RC, this will give you the core loss. When we are trying to do short cycle test now, we will apply what low voltage as we discussed, and we see the current that is flowing, okay? So let's see what is the I open circuit. We can do it as what V divided by Z equivalent. That means we need to know Z equivalent is what? What is Z equivalent? What is the equivalent? I think. The equivalent is equals to R equivalent plus J X equivalent, right? Okay, yeah. Yeah, it's R equivalent, equivalent plus impedance. J. Because this is the equivalent impedance, not the equivalent resistance, okay? Or oh, are we together? This is the equivalent, all right? Open circuit. Here we want to know, we want to see uh, for the open circuit case, we already get our IM, can find it since we have these two values, we also have the RC. Okay. This yeah. 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 Okay. So IM equals to V over XM. IC equals to V over RC. We now know our IC, okay, and IM. We know the current that is going. Remember, uh, the current that is going into the loop, right, into the perpendicular is going to also divide into two. One will go through the resistor and one will go through the inductor, right? So the summation of the two will tell us the current that is going to be passing through our core, through our core. Okay. Copper loss, this is our current. We want to see the losses that are going to occur in the copper, the copper winding. You have your cable. So here, you know, if you know, let's say, for example, in the primary case, what the losses that is going to be encoded is the summation. Okay, in the primary case is the I squared R, right? IP squared RP. Then in the secondary, you also you have IS squared RS. When you sum the two, you can now determine the amount of copper loss that is being made on the primary and secondary winding. Okay? And based on that too, you can know the core loss. The core loss, remember the RC and the XM, they are in the primary side. So, but it's mostly the core loss is the contribution of the RC that forms the core loss. Therefore, if we know the voltage, right? Power is also equal to V squared over R, right? So VP, we know the primary voltage, we divide it by R, and we know the core loss. That's this function. Uh, you can also find the impedance as referred to the primary side, just like we did. Uh, what is that? If you look at the primary side, it's what? A squared times R, right? Plus the other part. Okay, so what do we have here? That as referred is the tons ratio, which is A squared times the RS K. Then you sum them up, right, with the primary part. So RP plus RS prime. In this case, you assume no reactance, okay? All right, so let's take it, uh, let's look at, these are the functions that we have defined to let us know what we are talking about. 
Uh, if you want to know the V primary, you can just call that function. You pass to it the magnitude, the frequency, and you will be able to get a sinusoid. And you can also see the secondary if you pass uh, the time, you pass the number of tons in the primary, number of tons in the secondary, the voltage in the primary, and the frequency. With this, you will know your secondary voltage. You can find the magnetization current. You can also find the core loss current. Okay. Once you have this, you can go ahead and also obtain the Z equivalent in the primary. You can find the actual circuit. Find all this. And you can now come and see the copper loss. You can also see the core loss. Okay. So remember, in order to move to each step, you have to evaluate other values, right? Can't move forward without evaluating the previous value. So let's run this code and see. Okay, this part here is the plotting. You want to plot the primary and voltage, uh, primary and secondary voltages in one single plot to see how they, how they look like. We know our primary voltage has a magnitude of 230 and we know our turns ratios and we know our time span. So we would like to see a sinusoid, okay? And since this is a step down, what do we expect to see? We expect to see the secondary current, uh, secondary voltage to be lower than the, uh, the primary voltage. You will also like to see the magnetization and the core loss current, okay? And then lastly, we would like to plot the short circuit and the open circuit test to see how they look like. This is just going to display here in the console. All right, let's see. Okay, so from our display here, the short circuit current was calculated to be 17.69. Uh-huh, so open circuit magnetization current is 0.12. Open circuit core loss current is 0.23. Copper losses, uh, 406. Core losses, 52. 0.9 watts. Okay, and let's look at the plot. Okay, so I don't know if you can see the plot. Can you see the plot? Yes, sir. Okay, so this is the plot for the voltage. The primary voltage you can see, the peak to peak is getting almost to 230. However, the secondary is around 110, which is around half of 230. And that makes sense, right? Because our turns ratio is like 0 0.5. We have 100 at the primary, and then at the secondary, we have 50. Uh, in the case of the current, as we said, it is lagging uh, the voltage by 90 degrees. That's why you have this lag. Okay, this is the magnetization current, and this is the core loss current is fixed. In terms of losses, we can see the majority of our loss is due to the copper loss than the core loss. Okay, so how do we then address this issue of power loss uh, related to the copper loss and the core loss? What can you do to mitigate this? If you are having copper loss that is around uh, 400 watts, right? Almost 0 0.4 kilowatts. What can you do? No idea? What can you do? I don't know if you can hear me, no idea. I 
I think the obvious thing you can do is to reduce the uh, to find a better transformer, right? Or a better cable. You have a very high quality conductor, okay? Then you are going to reduce the copper losses. You know resistivity also? What the, the, what the proportional, uh, what the relationship between resistivity and resistance of a conductor? Resistance. Yeah, resistivity and resistance. Yes. And there's the relationship between area and resistance. But if you have the a, a larger cross-sectional area, what happens to the, resist, the resistance of the cable? Get a lower resistance. You you know the equation, right? R equals to rho L over A, right? You know this yes, equation, sir. right? Yeah, where L is the length of the cable. Rho is the resistivity, right? And A is the yes, area, cross-sectional area of the of the cable. So that means if I increase the cross-sectional area, I'm going to reduce the resistance. And when I reduce the resistance, what happens? I reduce my losses, right? Because losses are I squared R. So if R goes down, loss also goes down. Okay, you can also look at the length using the same equation, R equals to what rho L over A. So that means if you reduce the length, if I design my transformer very well in, to such, in such a way that I don't have to use a very lengthy, okay, I don't have to use a very lengthy conductor, okay, a very small conductor, small length, Okay, then I will also reduce my resistance in the conductor and that will reduce my loss. Guys, this is the engineering here, right? Not about doing the mathematics, it's for you to be able to connect one and two together. All these equations, this mathematics has been done. But when you are there in the field, all they would like to know is if you have issues like this, how do you solve it? So you have to be thinking like an engineer. What of the colors? What can we do to reduce this? In fact, in our case, we have more loss due to uh, due, due to copper than the core. It's in, almost in the orders of 10 is to 1. I think we should increase number of tons. So if you increase number of tons, what will happen? The loss will reduce. Okay, so if I increase, let's see. Let me increase which one, primary or secondary? Primary. So I should increase it. Okay, let's make it 150. Okay, guys, uh, keep note of the values now. Okay, 406 and 402. And uh, 52, sorry. Let's see what happens. Okay. So now that we increase the number of tons in the primary, okay, it has reduced all the way. The copper loss has reduced from what? From 406 to 230. So now you are thinking like an engineer. And that's why you have the program. You don't have to always go back and be writing stuff. You can do, this is what we call the design. This is what, this is the transformer design, okay? You have the parameters, 
then you do it in such a way that one, you have to keep in mind the practical constraints. There has to be some practical constraints into what you are doing, okay? Maybe the short circuit current, by doing this, you are increasing the short circuit current, right? Because what was the short circuit current before? Let's see. It was 17. Okay, by doing this, making this 150, the short circuit current becomes 10 amps. Okay. And ha. Huh. So there could be a constraint that tells you that in order for your transformer to operate, you have a minimum amount of short circuit current that it can support. So that doesn't give you that constraint. We always take them into consideration. We have what we call optimization. When you are designing, you have to also know how to optimize. There is always a trade-off. Otherwise, we could have maybe put 1,500, uh, you know, in the primary so that we get a very small amount of loss, right? You can see very small amount of loss. But then somebody will tell you, uh, according to practical scenarios, this, this transformer is not going to operate. And the reason is because they say the short circuit current is below the standard value. So those constraints, you have to always keep them in mind when you are designing your transformer so that you design something that does not violate any constraint and at the same time gives you the best possible result. So this tweaking of these values, it could even be a, uh, a, a project, okay? It can be a project. I will give you some constraint and I will tell you to go and find the optimal number of tons that will give me the least possible total loss in my, okay, in my circuit or in my transformer. So what do you do? You start looking for what we call uh, optimization tools. For example, you have genetic algorithm, you have particle swarm optimization. These are meta heuristics, right? You can use them. You tell them, okay, this is what I have. I want to design a transformer that is very, very efficient, giving me as low uh, loss as possible. However, at the same time, I am restricted. I am restricted if I add more, 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 more tons here, right? The point you are doing here is that if you add more tons, you are asking for more cable. You want me to give you more cable. And uh, for every meter of cable, you know, it's going to cost me money. I am your client and I want you to design me a transformer and you're asking me for $1 million. I know if I give you $1 million, we are going to get what? A very optimal transformer, but I don't have the $1 million, okay? So we cannot afford to make 1,000 tons. That's a constraint, economic constraint. So I might give you the budget of my, I might tell you, okay, my budget is that I don't want to spend more than $10,000. And I want the transformer to be able to supply me with, let's say, 10 kVA. And uh, this, 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 this. I give you my design parameters. And I tell you, go and design me a transformer. So you will come as an engineer plug in your constraint, you use some tools. We have other tools like Groovy. Uh, there is also another one, uh, Lingo. Yeah, Lingo, Lindo, uh, even MATLAB. Uh, in fact, I think even Python has also an optimization tool. So you tell it, okay, Python, this is my issue. This is the power I'm trying to minimize. I want to minimize this loss. However, the client tells me I can only get $10,000 and $10,000 can only buy me 1,000 meters of wire. 1,000 meters of wire, if I am using this type of core, I'm only going to be able to have 200 tons, okay, 200 winding tons, okay, for 1,000 meters because the core thickness is like five meters. So how do I go about doing this while staying within the budget of the client? and get him a transformer that has the minimum possible loss within his budget. Are you guys with me? Are you yes, guys sir. with me? 
Okay, so that's the whole engineering when it comes to transformer. Yes. All this theory is easy. You know, you have all this. You assume here you have unlimited amount of money. That's what we are saying. That's why you can even put 1,000 tons. Nobody is telling you, you don't worry. But in realistic terms, you can't just put 1,000 tons here. Because what happens if the cross-section of the core is like two square meters? So 1,000 tons of the meter, remember, I think armored cable per, 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 per meter, they are sending it around 20,000 Naira or 50,000 Naira, you know? And uh, maybe to make 1,000 tons, you are looking for 50,000 Naira times 2,000, times that's almost 200 million Naira. Who will give you that money? Nobody. Okay, guys. So this is what you are supposed to learn today. This is what is expected of you. So I'm giving you this. Uh, maybe uh, one of the projects that any of you who is into transformer design can do is this uh, uh, optimization. There are so many works done there. Some of your professors did some work in that regard. Uh, and you too, you might find yourself in a company that are into designing and manufacturing transformers. So if you know this as a key skill, okay, given the cost client constraints, you design him the best possible transformer, then that is something you can even go out and start selling for money. Okay? That's something you can set up you and build your own company. You are a transformer expert. You come, you tell us what are your needs, we'll make you the best possible transformer within your budget. Are we clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. All right, so I will I will send the code, I will send the lecture note, um, and then your assignment will be ready by Friday, okay? Once you submit the first one and uh, send it to my email. Okay, make sure you, 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 you yeah, do it in, uh, and I want the code because I want to run the codes, okay? I want the code, but I want you to write a well-written report with the results in the, in the assignment, okay, in the report. I want to see the results and I want to you to discuss the results. Not just give me results. I want you to tell me what the results are telling me, what the plots are saying. Okay, I want to understand that. Uh, then give me the code. I will run it and see how you do. And then this assignment is going to be based on this. I will give you some transformer specifications and parameters, and I will tell you to go and simulate it. And maybe to even make things interesting, I will even maybe ask you to use the, your registration numbers at the number of tons. Okay, I think that will be interesting so that everybody's result is going to be different. So if you are giving it to somebody doing it for you, okay, then he's going to make money. Uh -huh. And uh, that's something, <laughs> we, <laughs> yes, that's something I encourage. If you can do it and make money from others, do it. By becoming an entrepreneur in house, <laughs> I don't care. But when the exam comes, those who didn't know how to do it, they will also pay for it. Aha, uh -huh. will pay for it. Yes, okay. All right, guys, if there are no questions, I have to go now. Questions? No question. Okay. No. See you next week. See you next week. Take care. Bye. Okay. Somebody is raising yeah. up his hand. Abdul Rahman. Yeah, yeah. I will send it. I will send it via WhatsApp. Write the code and also the lecture note. Okay. Yeah, about the email, I'm going to submit the assignment. Assignment via email. Okay. Okay, the email. No, I, I'm going to send it for the email to us. You don't know my email? 
Mm. Are you reading my lecture or not? My email is there on the lecture or not? Yeah. Okay. Sir, Put please, you have not been sending the record of the lecture to the group. No, I have. I have. I think the only one I didn't send is the one for yesterday. Okay. I just checked. Yeah, it's the one for yesterday. That's the only one I didn't send. Okay. Okay, Abdul Rahman, you have question? Abdul Aziz, you have question? They are raising up their hands. Now regarding the assignment. Yeah. Going to write the calculations as that it add it in a PDF and put it to your email, or are we going to use it in a Microsoft Word? Aha. Uh -huh. Write your you can do the assignment either in Word and save it as PDF, no problem. Okay. If you use your hand and you write and I do not understand your handwriting, it is your problem, yeah? It's not my problem. So it's better to use Microsoft Word to type the equations. Okay. Um Sir. Yeah. Sir, can you yeah. extend the submission date to Monday morning? Why? Because you just implement new things that this is how you want it to be done. So we need to work on it. Okay, how did you do it before? <laughs> It's about the the Python code. Oh. OK. Yes. You don't know how to use Python? No, I know how to use Python. What I'm saying is because we need to go and redo it now and make sure that it's OK before we send it to you. Because you said you want to see, you want us to explain the code, how it works. I'm and not saying explain the different. code. I don't care, but I can read your code and understand what is going on, OK? What I'm saying is explain okay. the result. Okay, if you are okay. writing a report, right, you will put this graph in the report. Okay, so if you just put the graph and you did not say anything, what does that say? You don't even understand why you got the graph. You get me? So you have to explain to me. Yes. Uh, okay, like plot one, plot A is the graph that. of primary against secondary voltages. And as you can see, the primary voltage is around 230 yes. which is in accordance with the value that was given however the secondary voltage is around 150 that is now, true because the secondary ton is less than the primary tons or is half of the primary so it, who is making noise okay uh munirat is that clear you have to explain the yes, graph sir. for me, not the code. The code, yes, I can read yeah. it and understand. But the graph, okay. I want you to explain it. How, why okay. is it like this? Okay. 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 Any other thing? No thing. So because you asked, we can we can we can postpone to Sunday or Monday morning, no problem. Uh, but mm -hmm. I hope the extension is not just going to give you an excuse not to start working on it as soon as possible. Okay. Okay, okay. thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you, yeah. sir. No problem. Okay. No question, right? Are we clear? Can I go? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. sir don't yes. forget to send the record for yesterday. Yeah, I will send it immediately after the class now. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. All right, guys. Take care. Bye. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Bye. 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 Bye.